Hi, Steve Sterling here from the End Time Prophecy eCourse website, the End Time Prophecy eCourse YouTube channel, and the End Time Prophecy eCourse Facebook page. Welcome. There's a text in Revelation 18 that makes an appeal to Christians who are in false religious systems. The Lord said to them, Come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins that he received, not of her plagues. Now, what do you think is going to drive the people of God out of these false religious systems? You think it's the discovery that Sunday is false? I think it is going to be more than that. There's a text in 2 Thessalonians, I think, chapter 2, that says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, what is this falling away? Because when you understand what this falling away is, then you'll get a better understanding of what is going to drive the people of God out of these false religious systems. The falling away that is described here in 2 Thessalonians is speaking of a scenario that is going to prepare the way or a scenario that leads to the rise of the Antichrist, aka the man of sin. When this falling away takes place, it will prepare the way for the rise of the Antichrist to the point where when he rises, instead of people opposing him, people are going to welcome him and they are going to be ready to eat up every word he says. What is going to be that falling away that leads to the rise of such a person? Here's how the Bible describes him and this will give us an idea of what this falling away is going to be about. What did the Bible say? The Bible says the man of sin will exalt himself above all that is called God and all that is worship. And you hear me quoting that text over and over again. And just in case you haven't watched my previous videos on the subject, what this exaltation above all that is called God and all that is worship is speaking of is the demand of this man of sin for exclusive worship. For a man to come and exalt himself above all that is called God and everything that people worship. What he is actually saying is that he wants exclusive worship. So you are not even allowed to worship your pagan gods as far as that man is concerned. So when that man of sin rises, he will set himself up in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. How do you think he will do that? He is not omnipresent. So how do you think he will set himself up in the temple of God? by an image. He is going to see to it that an image of himself is placed in the temple of God and by doing so he will be saying to the world that he is God and he alone must be worshipped. What that is saying is that his image will be placed in every church. That is going to be the new religious order and that is how the man of sin will exalt himself above all that is called God and all that is worshipped. There's no other explanation. You can't spiritualize that away. You can't symbolize that away. It is a real, literal thing that is going to happen. And when the Bible says, people shall worship the image of the beast, that's exactly what the Bible means. We can't spiritualize that away. And that is going to be the basis on which the Sabbath and Sunday will become a major issue because it is all about who you worship. Now, imagine yourself, a Sunday keeper, worshipping in one of these churches. And one Sunday you come inside and see the image of somebody set up inside there and the congregation worshipping it. If you are a true Christian, true to the principles that God teaches you from the scriptures, what will be your response? You are going to flee. Now, I know that some people are there thinking that, so what about Sunday keeping? Well, Sunday keeping right now is the order of the day and many Christians are sincerely practicing that kind of worship and most people who keep Sunday are keeping Sunday because they believe that it doesn't matter. They don't believe that they are, they are doing it because they are celebrating the resurrection or they are doing it because they believe it's a true day of worship. Most people are doing it because it's a convenient day for them to worship God, right? As far as they are concerned, you can keep any day holy as long as it is convenient for you and your work situation. A lot of people, even sincere people, look at it that way. So it is going to be difficult to convince them that Sunday is such an evil institution, so evil that you deserve to leave 
your church who is practicing it, it is going to be difficult. What do you think is going to drive them out in droves? The setting up of the image of the beast. In other words, when the new religious order is established, people are going to realize that everything that they are accustomed to as Christians worshipping in their different churches, as Christians who have enjoyed the plurality of religion, the plurality of denominations, Christians who have enjoyed religious freedom, they are going to realize that this is a strange development and it is something that they should not have anything to do with. And they are going to leave. Now, in time past, it is due to a compromise between paganism and Christianity that forces a lot of Christians to flee. Most of them were worshipping in their homes and after a while they had to flee to solitary areas where they can enjoy their religious freedom of worship. All because Christianity has compromised with paganism. And one of the signs of compromise is the introduction of Sunday. And don't let anybody tell you any foolishness. Sunday was not adopted because they want to celebrate the resurrection. The Catholic Church themselves will tell you that they are the ones who change it. And they don't change it because they want to celebrate the resurrection. They change it because in their minds, they want to transfer solemnity from the Sabbath to Sunday. So they just use the resurrection as a face card to do that. So that is one point of compromise between paganism and Christianity. And there are many other points, right? Including images in the churches and so forth. What I'm talking about is what is going to drive true Christians, the people of God, out of these false religious systems. And I'm saying that it is not Sunday. Sunday is going to be just another reason why they are going to leave. But something else is going to drive them out. And I'm saying to you that when the church adopt the new religious order and when the false prophet start to work miracles and begin to speak to the world telling them that they must make an image unto the beast and worship it that is when true christians are going to flee because they are going to realize that the world is being converted into a pagan culture and therefore they should have nothing to do with it now let me tell you how things are going to happen the great false prophet of Revelation 13, which comes under the symbol, the lamb horned beast, he is going to start the campaign. And remember, Jesus himself prophesied that in the last days, there are going to be many false prophets and false Christs who shall show great signs and wonder that if it were possible, it would have deceived the very elect. You remember that prophecy? Now, those false prophets are going to join in after the campaign is kicked into gear. After the great false prophet kick off the campaign, then these other false prophets are going to join in. They are going to receive power from the great false prophet to work miracles. They are going to go to their congregation and work miracles and convince them to adopt the new religious order and go idolatry. But they are not going to call it idolatry. They are going to call it by a different description so as to convince the people that it is something good that God would accept. But they are not only going to convince the world to go idolatry and convince the churches to go idolatry. They are also going to convince them to take the mark of the beast. If you look at Revelation 13 and verse 12, the Bible says that this beast, this second beast, the lamb horn beast, aka the false prophet, caused the world to worship the first beast. And how did he cause it? If you watch a previous video that I did, you will see how I explained to you that it is through his miracle working campaign that he convinces the world to worship the first beast. Then the Bible went on in verse 16 to say he caused them to take his mark. So that one false prophet through his campaign is going to convince the world to worship the beast and worship his image. In other words, he is going to convince the world to go idolatry. And in addition, he is going to convince them to take the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is not going to be imposed on us by some secular institution. The mark of the beast is going to come to us through the church. That's what the Bible says, right? Somebody is going to speak to the world. They are going to work miracles. And you know, miracles does not come to us through secular means. It comes through us through Christianity. And Christianity is going to convince the world to take the mark of the beast and worship his image. And when the third angel's message goes out, the true people of God in these Sunday-keeping churches are going to accept the message 
and move out. And they are going to move out in droves. And the rest of people are going to remain there because their reason for attending church is not to go and worship God, is not to go and learn about Jesus. Their reason for attending church is to find a church that can bury them when they're dead. Or it is just for a social purpose, you know, just to have a social experience. But the people who are going to move out of those churches are people who are there to serve God, who love Jesus, and want to continue to be his followers. And that's the reason why the first, second, and third angel's messages are going to be so crucial because it is going to be preached during the time of the new religious order while the world is bowing down to the image of the beast. The third angel's message will be going out telling people that if they worship the image of the beast and take his mark, they are going to receive the plagues. And that's the reason why the first angel's message tells us to fear God and give glory to him, not to the beast, not to the image of the beast, but to God alone. So while this message is going out, the man of sin will be exalting himself above all that is called God and all that is worship. He will demand exclusive worship. As simple as that. Now I'm going to stop here. But if you want to know exactly how the world will go idolatry, exactly how the mark of the beast will be imposed, the mechanism by which they are going to impose the mark of the beast, go to my website and download the free book, 7 Steps to Becoming an End Time Prophecy Expert in 48 Hours. It is going to give you everything in detail and tell you about the End Time Prophecy e-course. This is Steve Sterling signing out.